Hello everybody, welcome to the Blood Bowl Super League show, episode number five. This week, the special guest is the Twitch granddaddy of Blood Bowl himself, it's Kanor. Um, and yeah, we'll do the same as every week, we'll look around the league, look at the results, the fixtures, the tables, um, look at one game in depth. And uh, don't forget to check out the website that we've got with all the fixtures and everything on. And also I've got a site for the tables that you can check, up-to-date tables. Um, so yeah, all that good stuff. Let's get to it. Okay, so here we have um, match the match of the week. And uh, hello, Kano. Hello. I mean, wanted what, what, to have you on the show. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. I, fi uh, I finally get to talk about uh, all my opponents. <laughs> uh, they're all great people. Yeah, uh, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be my thing. Uh, way, you know, way to start with the blitz uh, wakes everyone up. <laughs> yeah, blitz into double skulls. <laughs> that's pretty wild, isn't it? So a bit of a bit of give and take there. Down to two re rolls already. Dio. So I, I mean, you're you're in this division, right? So you're uh, and you're playing dwarves. So you're already used to the, uh, uh, you know, the the short. I was going to say short sightedness, but that's not dwarves. But the the amount of block and guard all around. Yeah. Because uh, I mean, it's we have some of that in in Group A, uh, but I'm not sure it's worked out that great so far for for the guard crew. But it seems more even in Group B. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, we, we've got all of the dwarves and chaffs, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, this is interesting, right? Because, like, PC has won all three games leading up at this point. Dio has uh, not. <laughs> no, I, and, I, and I, I heard there were some valid excuses for some of the things. Yes. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how how this game goes, assuming uh, there aren't any more of the of the same issues, meaning uh, you know internet or his mouse mouse stops working or uh, all the things that can go wrong, especially in this type of format, right? Because I think one of the things that's kind of it's I think it's harder to see, especially with streamers that are used to like talking a lot, but one minute turns does affect you not necessarily like on a normal turn but when things go haywire like in this instance where someone gets a blitz on you and instantly steals your ball it kind of throws all your normal plans out the window and then all of a sudden you have to spend 30 seconds to figure out what the best way to move forward is yeah. so it kind of puts your uh start using your brain which is annoying it's very annoying, isn't it? And even when it went right, like, even when it went right for me against Calcium, like, I just didn't have the time to work out the best play. And, like, as it happens, I could have surfed his ball carrier, but I just couldn't work it out mm -hmm. in the time. <laughs> and things had gone brilliantly then. Just, no, no, I think, I think that's one of the things with, like, my own rat team is that it's, you know, on paper, it's not the best. But I don't, like, I've less, I feel like I've less things to worry about because I can always just dodge away and not worry about it yeah whereas uh, some of the other teams kind of yeah you do have to block your way through things which it's usually better but takes longer um that was interesting wasn't it i'd gone for that 1d first i don't know maybe he mm -hmm. thought he had guard or just like maybe he thought it was a 2d because that seemed pretty risky to open up the rest of the turn but um yeah i mean it's that's a ko at least so that's you know you 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 always want it. You never expect it, and then you get sad when you don't get it. Um, how many? Let's see. Uh, Dio has twelve players, right? So he's yeah. still he's still he's still. It's also Ko, but Ko's never come back. Dio did use his apple as well. That that, that guy would have been killed, but for an apple. Walker. Yeah. Totally missed. Okay, so runners back middle of the pitch. I mean, at this point, if you're PC, you're pretty happy that you recover that. Yes, yeah, he has recovered it pretty much. Like, it's not it's not great, is it? But it's pretty much on track. He's removed a guy. Dio's Apo is gone. He's nearly up to midfield on turn two. This is actually pretty pretty good drive for PC now from I mean, potential I mean, disaster. <laughs> I mean, being at that point as Dorps is not necessarily something you are, even if you didn't get blitzed. Because moving the ball and getting it into a cage can be tricky. 
depending on the cage. Absolutely. Okay, let's see. Oh. I mean, I'm not. Hmm. Oh, he's got, he's got, he's got a sure hand ball, and then he's got guard. Hold, oh what, the, God, what the? What the? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> double four plus dodges. <laughs> to do Wait, did it? Did he? One, two. I'm sure. Did he even need? Dodges. Yeah, no, it was two dodges. But did he need to do two dodges? Couldn't he get there with three GFIs? He did. He did. He did three GFIs as well. So. Did he? Oh, yeah. I misread the dice like then. Yeah, I mean, oh, he stood up, didn't he? He stood up. That was yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That's wild. I mean, admittedly, like, yeah, I think it's. <laughs> I I didn't I didn't necessarily see a better uh, blitz than that, but at the same time, yeah, making that decision in one minute is pretty. I think that's pretty impressive. That's, it is, yeah, that is ballsy. I guess so is that on like PC side because that could have been a like a one in nine, and then, well, then you've got all of a sudden got a blocker next to the ball carrier. Yeah, with guard. Well, if Dio did two dodges, he's definitely going to do one dodge this turn, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, also like even, this one is even better in the sense that there's other stuff around. For, for follow up blocks. Yeah. Uh, okay. Also, the fact that that, uh, uh, I mean, PC, PC's thrower has just managed to pick it up as well, which is, you know, it's what you expect, but also it never happens. Yeah. To me, it's like, it's like, it's the same, it's like Rick, uh, Rick Ogres. You, you know that they're supposed to bonehead at some point. And then they never really do when they when you want them to. <laughs> oh, that's. I wonder why he used, did the hob. Why did the hobgoblin block the troll slayer there? Because I guess he because thinks if, if he fails, he just accepts it, and that's the end of the turn. He didn't want him not hit. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a fair, that's a fair point. He is down to one reroll. I'm I'm just whenever I see a whenever I see a dodging uh, bold centaur, I assume it's got. Uh, um, break tackle. Yeah. So I'm like, it's just a two plus, but not here. It's actually a 50 50. It's just that it's worked really well. Yeah, now all of a sudden he's in a lot of trouble, isn't he, uh, PC? Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> it's scattered to this guy. Yeah, I mean, to be. And this is this is some of the things I've thought a lot about when it comes to, like, the uh, Super League format, in that if you're up against experienced coaches that know how teams play or how they're expected to play playing differently or slightly more recklessly than you you would normally play might pay off because, <laughs> or you or you can just do that that's <laughs> but when basically when people play you know air quotes strange it you, you need to Admit or take even more time to figure out what the heck's going on. Yeah. Um, which is not something you want to do in a in a one minute turn format. You want to be like, yes, I know what's happening. Also, I'm not entirely sure how he's getting this uh, blocker out of here. It doesn't look like he can, does it? Oh, here, here he's coming here, chaining. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Very nice. I mean, you can't argue with the results. <laughs> Holy shit! I mean, e even even if you could, uh, once the high risk plays worked, I I feel like then being able to actually make something out of it rather than just having it be like, heck yeah, I got the ball loose. Oh, they took it back. That's a sign of a like really competent and experienced coach. So let's see what there's. He should be able to. But can he? Can he block that down? He can block the. No, well, he could have. I. No. Yes, he could have. He could have blocked the thrower onto the. Um, onto the ball, but I guess there's little point in that really because it's. It's a short blocker that's holding it, and it's not like they're not going to run away from him. 
Yeah. Yeah, much better to try and control the bulls and make sure he can't get a cheeky hand off. Oh, dirty one D's here from PC. Uh-huh. Oh, well. Oh. We will come out. Surprise. It'll be interesting to see this. Like, it's turn five. So, like, I feel like at this point, like, you know, I think you've discounted the idea of having that blocker run down the pitch and score. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what Dio's tactic is. Because he could just try and, like, stall this out, right? He's... I mean, you you always want to score, but if you stop the dwarfs from scoring in their drive, you, normally you're pretty happy with that result. Yeah. Um, I think okay. he wants to engineer engineer a bull. Bull, bull play somehow, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, it's also if if you're if you're looking at your opponent being dwarfs, it's not like even if you fail on turn six. It's not like they're going to have an easy time moving it up the pitch. Absolutely. Because I think PC has... Does PC have one thrower and two blitzers? Or does he have... Because he only has, like... He has the other on the bench. Ah, yeah. So he still only has three agility pieces on the pitch at the moment. Yeah. Or... Move, move, movement. 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 Movement and agility, like uh, I, that's why I don't like the Russian, the Russian tactic of uh, no blitzers. I think it's way too, uh, way too like fragile. Yeah, um, yeah, like whenever, whenever I, whenever I come up against uh, dwarfs that do not have two runners, I'm like, well, this is pretty much like play, playing against uh, skinks. Only I have to get rid of less pieces. <laughs> Because one, but yeah, it's I don't know. It seems it, I, as a you know as a background as, or at least like to pretend that I'm an elf coach at heart. Uh, whenever I see people go too hard into bash, I'm like, but have you thought about moving the ball and possibly scoring? <laughs> okay. With that said, other than other than like the. The nice turnaround and the and the steal. It's been a pretty, you know, we're in turn. I, oh, I, well, I will still say the thing I meant to say. It's been a pretty friendly game. Yeah. Like there hasn't been like there. Oh. Okay. Um. Huge, isn't it? I, I, I need. Yep. <laughs> That gives him the assist and the run through. Oh, that really screwed him. Yeah, but both times he used the Rappo, but it's just one K yeah. on Hobgoblin. Yeah, hardly anything. It has been very friendly. Okay, but... He throw us back here. He just needs to try and free up a Blitzer somehow. I mean, that... I, I, I shouldn't be too hard to roll in a bunch. Especially not if you roll that. This is, uh, I mean, this is back and forth from, oh. It's been a wild game, certainly. Well, he's not even okay. trying. He's not even, boo. I, yeah, I expected that guy to, well, yeah, I expected that guy to run forward just as a, because of course I expected that guy to run forward. <laughs> yeah, where's his Kanoran I, threat? <laughs> <laughs> also, like, I'm not, I'm not sure I understand what that uh, blocker is doing back there, because yeah. it, it's not really stopping the ball center from moving. It didn't even stop him getting two dice on the ball. On the, on no, the... so. Oh, and another snake guy. Oh yeah, I guess he, he needed a power, otherwise he could have just pushed him, right? If he had just pushed him, he would have still got clear. So that meant that he yeah. needed the power to get clear. So it, it did add something. That is a lovely surf. Yeah. But turn eight, so... Just looking for an injury. Mm-hmm. Doesn't do it. Nope. Keep, keep, keeps being friendly. Okay, <laughs> and I think this... Probably, yeah, there's no one in scoring. No, At least I don't. Yeah. 
I don't even think the no the coal mining ball can't get over there. But it leaves it leaves PC with a lot of work to do in the second half. It does yeah? No no one scored against him yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's uh, that's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive defense by PC. So yeah. Far. And I mean it's. But like, like we talked about just a few minutes ago, it's a bit, it's been very friendly. So, like, the Dio's gonna have a full team, and so so is PC. Um, well, he gets the surf oh, back though, so maybe uh, not. Let's see, let's see who's got the bloodiest fan, the bloodier pants. It's they're equally friendly. <laughs> Because none of the door fans can get over the banister to get onto the pitch. <laughs> wow. That was, that was so close, wasn't it? That was so close to a turnover score from Dio. And thanks to some crazy bull dodges. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it, it I think it's one of the, it's one of those things really where looking at it, you tend to, or at least I tend to do like the desperation or high risk plays later when there's like, oh, I, I'm forced to do it now. But seeing someone like do it early in the perfection role, you know, if this works, I'm in a much better position is uh, really cool to see. And got a lovely touch back out of it. No, that's a good point because that is a ver that's like a very Dior thing to do. You know, he's very, uh, he's a very very much a thinker is Dio when it comes to like Blood Bowl strategy and everything so obviously he thought the, the payoff there was so great that even though it's kind of low odds to work it, it, the, you know the swing is so big if he gets it yeah you know, it's time to go for it and yeah you, you would very rarely see that even from top level players I, I think doing something like that okay freeing up the claw mighty low piece yeah going for the Go for the uh, uh, PC's mighty blow. Makes sense. Let's see. If... Oh. Oh, oh no. beautiful. <laughs> but it's still like it's still. It, I was gonna say just KOs in this instance. I feel like a KO is as good as dead in this format because we're probably not getting outside of this drive. If everything goes Dio's plan, we're not gonna get that many turns extra. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna try and grind this out. Yeah. And it's funny the Claw Mighty because obviously this is like it's it's been a dream group for him for his Claw Mighty with all the dwarves mm -hmm. and everything, but uh, it does seem like it's a bit much stacking stacking two skills just for violence, you know, like different with Mighty Blow Tackle, which you get already on the dwarves, but I do think like maybe the Claw is a is is a bit unneeded, but um, it has worked out for Dio and the group he's in. That could have been another guard, couldn't it? You know, or like block yeah, no, or it, something. It, it, it's interesting because I thought about. I mean, I didn't honestly. I didn't put too much thinking into what team I was going to play. It was more a case of, okay, what team do I feel decently competent with that I could probably play them in a like in a one minute uh, turn format, and that's how I ended up. Uh, on rats, but even then, when it came to skill traces, I was like, I can't, I can't really think of anything that's where having two stacked skills are better than having two players with one extra skill. Because it's, but I mean, it's also at least in my mind, it's it's one of those cases, as well, right? I where. Like, whenever you play against someone in this format that has two skills on a player, it's a tiny bit more of a, like, a beacon of... I probably want to see if I can hurt that thing, because it's got two skills. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I, I think the biggest one is the Mighty Blow Tackle, isn't it? You know, that, that's the big yeah. one, because that, that did dissuade people from using Wood Elves. We've got no Wood Elves in the entire the entire thing, and I, th I think the, the, the possibility of people stacking Mighty Blow Tackle... Uh, Certainly factored into that a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm I'm in I'm interested to see how how Dio's gonna like move up the pitch 
here, right? Because, as we talked about, there hasn't been that, like... They're probably not... Uh, PC's probably not going to be able to thin out enough pieces, and the same is true on, like, uh, Dio side. So, like, where, where do you go? Admittedly, it's on, it's on a bull. It can move nine. So, it doesn't need to move far, but it needs to move a bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I absolutely, uh, well, uh, funnily enough, it, uh, like I've played PC already and he really struggled to move up against me and I really struggled to move up against him. So <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it is it is tough against the Dwarf Wall for sure. But yeah, that, that is the key thing, isn't it? The ball having that like strike range of nine squares, he does only have to get him in four yeah. squares deep and it, he can wait a while before he gets there as well. So probably okay. just a lot of so punching. <laughs> Some committing here. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm interested in, in Dia's thought process of not marking some of the, some of the dwarves on the side just to keep them away. Like he's got a, there's a blitzer and a long beard off to the side that he didn't mark because he couldn't mark him with two pieces and they both have a guard. But it does mean that they're like free to move if they need to. Because that's all what through the center now, though, isn't he? Maybe that was his idea. Yeah. Just make, make the center strong, and then yeah, and then if if they if they weaken either side, then you can swing to that side with the with the movement of the bulls. Uh, it certainly seems to be certainly seems to be working. Um, let's see if they. Oh, yep. Okay, go through. You could even block with a bull here to free this guy up, couldn't you? Yeah, or. Uh... So. I mean, this is when you this is when you want the the blitzers and the runners to try and catch up. Cause if... Oh. Now I've stopped talking because I'm I'm really curious to see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, he's got especially. Yeah, and the, the, he's got he's got a he's got a uh, short blocker. Yeah, that guy. I was like, are you doing both GFIs here or just one? Just one. Just a moment. Uh -huh. That is a nice. That was a nice turn, wasn't it? Screen yeah, up. like I, I, I didn't, I didn't expect the middle to be as vulnerable as it turned out to be. I mean, I probably could have seen it if it was like two or three minute turns, but in a one minute turn, being like, yeah, this is. Here we go, <laughs> and then kind of make you hack him. Because I mean, the nice thing here too, right? For for Dio is that unless PC marks him with two pieces, he can just he can most likely just blitz himself free. I mean, that's no longer the case because uh, PC has marked him with three. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I guess we're back to the reverse of last turn and like. How does PC get out of this? And I'm like, how does Dio get out of this? <laughs> yeah. I think he's probably going to blitz blitz this blitzer and hope that's, for a pow. That's you're you're always happy when you're playing when you're playing shorts and you're like, ah, it's a both down. Oh, but I'm blocking a runner. It's fine. Okay, so that freed up the bull. Yeah. There's probably some. I was gonna say there are there are some. Uh, yeah, he could he could have chain pushed with with the. Oh, but we're getting. Oh, he's doing it this way instead. Yeah, I think this. This, this is nice getting hit the runner, isn't it? The yeah. Armor of the runner. Thick skull saves today, and a pow. Oof, that's. I think he can safely stall now, can't he? Sucks. Yeah, I mean, he got he got the results he needed, I think. And he's got a hob goblin that's free that can just put some tackles on down. Yeah. That was really nicely played. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful stuff from Dio. This is the deal that we'd expected in, in the Bull Super League and like... Yeah, he did have problems. Whoa, he's made the 5 plus Holy! <laughs> and he like I was I, I was gonna say he almost got it, but it was like he's still an uphill after all that. But uh, 
I mean, even 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 if he gets that down, Dio is in such a good position right now with a hobgoblin and other stuff around. Yeah. yeah that, that was a turn. That wasn't it. Three stuns. Three stuns that turn. Mm-hmm. On, on the critical breakaway turn, like, sometimes you'll get the three stuns against dwarves. Like, you'll get that turn on, like, you know, turn three or something. It doesn't even help you, does it? Whereas here, it was just so yeah. much critical. Like, there was no... Um, you're, you're so happy when you're like, oh, yeah, they're stunned. They get to move one space <laughs> in two turns. And you're like, I, I can move away from here now. Uh, yeah, we'll see if if this is. It's just a ball candy scanning. Oh, that's fair. He's, he's not gonna, he's not gonna risk. No, risk yeah, two turn chances. No point. I'm not, I'm, I'm curious to. Has the the claw mighty blow has done like one KO? Maybe it's done more, but I only recall one of them at the moment. Oh, yeah, I only recall one as well. Why? Oh, he he didn't want the push because it would have uh, made the dodge easier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or it wouldn't have it would have made the dodge the same, but he'd be uh, he'd be one closer because he'd have to he'd most likely dodge backwards. Oh, oh. <laughs> good at dodging these dwarves. I he's I mean I keep saying he's so close. He's not he's not that close in getting the two die, but it's also not that unlikely. Yeah, it really isn't. Uh, block against no block. That is that is pretty good, odds, isn't it? One in four, knocking yeah. you down. And and he's 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 also forcing Dio to you know actually do blocks before scoring. It's turn sixteen. Dio has two rerolls, so this is likely to work. But he has to make some blocks before he can do that. Which you know, any die you force your opponent to make, it's good. And no block either on either of the blocks. There was no yeah. way to get a hit with a blocker. There, there you go. He sco Dios does the impossible and scores against Purple Chest. Very, very well played. And I like, and I say that from the perspective of like, it's Dio playing really well, both the first and the second half. Like no sh no shame on PC because I think PC played, you know. Dwarfs. <laughs> yeah, I mean PC is the absolute, the absolute pinnacle of dwarf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dwarf, dwarf, dwarf on Blood Bowl two, isn't he? Pretty much. Well, anywhere. But it's uh, like from from the from the like streamer perspective here as well. I rarely, if ever, play uh, play dwarfs mainly because people watching tend to not like it as much. <laughs> but if I'm if I'm gonna watch someone else play Blood Bowl. Um, I tend to when I when I when I did a lot of like watching just replays or live games on Fumble, I did a lot of uh, I watched a lot of Dwarfs because good Dwarf coaches, where positioning is key, is really really interesting. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I I agree. I think there's a lot a lot to it, and and you know it, it's easy to say it's easy to play Dwarfs because it's just stupid. Everyone's got block and everything, but yeah, they're, they're also movement four, so. There is yeah. a lot of positioning going into it, and obviously maximizing the guard and everything, and and like it's not as easy as just sticking a guy in there, is it? It's about where the guard is and how to make it out of your opponent and, and all that sort of stuff. And so yeah, there is a lot into dwarves, and yeah, PC is is a great person um, to learn that from. But uh, incredible mm -hmm. performance from Dio. Yeah. And the second match of Group B was Andy Davo versus. Mr. Page 404, and he won two one. Very impressive. Yeah. Mm hmm No, I mean he had a he had a he had a rough start, uh, Mr. Page, but you know, it's I'm sure as a dwarf coach, it's it's nice when when dark elves behave and you actually get to use tackle. With that said, eight armor breaks out of what was it, fifty two blocks? Yeah. It's uh it's probably a bit <laughs> frustrating. <laughs> Yeah, and he, of course he's got the death roller there for for like three dice with mighty blows as well. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
Hey, interesting, isn't it? I, I did I did watch a little bit of this, and Andy Davo did score early on on his offensive drive. So, I, um, you know, maybe again he was just looking for that turnover, uh, or maybe he just didn't have any choice but to score. Um, but whichever. Yeah, I mean, it it's when you when you're playing against the death roller, like it does depend a bit as well on okay, how how long do I want to have to deal with this death roller? Because we're not getting that many bribes around here. Uh, so it's like it, it's available for a drive so sometimes you're like you know what I'll score quickly and then dodge away from it so I don't have to deal within the second half but yeah it's probably one of those games where you're like mm, I should probably go uh, watch the VOD of this and yeah. see what actually happened yeah, a good shout and the final game of group B was myself versus Calcium and uh there you go. It was 1-0. <laughs> I, I was... mean, I'm shocked that a a human versus dwarf where the dwarfs won ended up being 0-1. Shocked <laughs> that that's the result. Yeah. It was it was really close, actually. It, it could have easily been 1-0 to Calcium on, an, on another day. Um, I, I, okay, well, I didn't miscalculate. I just didn't calculate on turn, turn mm. 7. Uh, you know, like because one minute turns, you know, obviously playing in here, it, it gets it gets a bit hectic, and I just moved up expecting my cage to be able to reach the squares that I wanted them to be able to reach, and they were one short. So if if mm. I if I'd spent like twenty seconds thinking of that first, he wouldn't have had a shot of stopping me. But as it was, I totally messed up. Uh, Calcium did the right things, got a shot on the ball, not popped it loose, got an ogre on the ball. It was, but then I got the luckiest scatter ever. And was able to uh, was able to get in one nil, and then I managed to do like a crazy dodge double GFI one dice powers ball carrier on turn sixteen. So disgusting yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah, it was. You it did was, disgusting stuff. Yeah, it was very lucky. <laughs> it could have easily been one nil the other way, but um, it wasn't. <laughs> so this is the table. Um, what do you think about this? I mean, it'll be interesting to see what happens at the top. Uh, there's, there's still like, there's, there's room for uh, for a lot of uh, people to get in. I of course would like to see. I feel like both uh, uh, whoever whoever Purple Chess and that Jimmy Fantastic are, they should probably like if they could just lose their last two games, that'd be great. And then maybe, you know, Andy and Calcium could just win. <laughs> so, assu assuming. Because when I, I mean, it seems tight, but also, it's tight at, there's, sorry, I'm rambling and not saying anything. I think what I'm trying to say is, Group B seems to have a lot of coaches with a decent shout to get in, still. Yeah, there hasn't um, been any draws, which is, which is interesting, isn't it? In a team, yeah. in, a, in, a, in, a, in a group full of dwarves and dwarves, there yeah. hasn't been a draw. No, but I mean, looking all the way down to Dio, who's currently fifth, yeah, with four games, Dio could easily make it in, yeah. and that's you know that's range. Yeah. Um, the fact that Inarion is uh, still at zero point, I think, just talks more to his bravery than anything else. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, because but he would, have, he would have been much more of a factor if he'd taken his Wood Elves that he's famous for. Um, yeah, he loves his halflings. <laughs> I think it's it, it's one of those things. He did the he did the same thing that Rick did, where it's like let's just take a let's take one of the funny teams. It'll be funny, and then he ended up in in the group where everyone else is like, yeah, this is going to be real fun for us, but not so much for you. <laughs> yep. Uh, and here's the fixtures for week six. Um, so there you go. Take us take us through it. <laughs> Well, uh, well, I mean, we've we've seen uh, Mr. Page finally. Uh, I was going to say finally step up. That sounded ruder than I meant it to. But <laughs> more being like, uh, he's clearly a force that can be reckoned with. It'll be interesting to see how dwarves versus death roller uh, dwarves work out. Um, not on my end, not necessarily liking the Death Roller that much. I feel like you're probably favored in that matchup. But if uh, if he gets the uh, wins the kick and goes for an eight turn offensive drive, and somehow manages to get rid pop one or two or three or dwarfs with his Death Roller, I mean, 
we've we've seen weirder things happen so far uh, in this uh, in this league. <laughs> we have, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a big uh, wild card, isn't it? The death roller. Like, yeah. it can it can easily just like it's terrifying to face, to be honest. Especially as dwarves, you've got no strength of your own. So, it's strength seven. What can you do against it? <laughs> yeah. No, but I I feel like looking at this and then Dio versus an uh, you know. Uh, Shorts versus Halflings. We talked about how brave uh, Inarian's been, but that's you know about it. And Purple Chest versus Calcium. I feel like in in game one, you versus Page, and in game two, Dio versus Inarian. I feel like both you and Dio are probably going into them decently confident, just on paper on team builds. Uh, pur purple Chest versus Calcium. Uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be the interesting one for me, I think, when when it shows up uh, as has being played. Um, that's the void I'm gonna go and not sneak a peek at the results uh, beforehand because I feel like that one's gonna be really interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's it's true. Like humans were are really hard to deal with, and uh, it was funny watching back the vod of my game versus Calcium. The commentators were like, "Why is he hitting the catcher here? They're armor eight. They're not armor seven. And it, it wasn't because they're armor eight. It's because I'm tired. You know, it wasn't because I thought they were armor seven. It's because I'm terrified of them. They're so fast, mm -hmm. and that is a real big, real big aspect of the humans, isn't it? They're so fast, and dwarves are so yeah. slow that that you've really got to. Like I was really going for them, and uh, yeah, it should be very interesting to see. If calcium uh, can bang one in against PC. <laughs> okay, so now let's have a look at the Group A matches. We've got Elliot taken down Gdanik 2 0. Mm hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the, uh, I, if it was, if I was Gdanik, uh, I'd be frustrated with those three armor breaks. Uh, but well played by Elliot. Yeah, I mean, you know, he was due some luck. He's he's been he's had some horrible luck uh, so yes. far. Really. I'm getting getting nearly pitch cleared by Skaven, I seem to recall. <laughs> no, but I'm, I, if I recall correctly, like the first few games, he had several like turnovers with just dub skulls on on his black works because yeah. they all have guard rather than block. Uh, which you know, it's gonna happen. It just sucks when it happens on a turn uh, when you play it sucks on a vital turn and B against teams that can do shit about it. And he's generally in a division with teams that can do shit about it. Yeah, and to be fair, he's only got two rerolls and 13 players. And yeah, if he, that, yeah. that kind of build would probably work a lot better against dwarves than uh, the humans and, mm -hmm. and elves he's had to face in this. And next up, we've got Rick Reckless and his crazy ogres in an absolute dicing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, versus Shawnee. There you go. Yeah, no, like, I I watch this, and whenever you watch uh, Rick's ogres, at the start of the game, you're like, surely he's not going to be able to pick the ball up with the ogres this time around. And then picks the ball up, and then he injures everyone on the other team. And you're like, I can't believe this happened again. <laughs> Uh, but it did, and it keeps happening, and um, I'm real annoyed by it, because I'm up <laughs> against him next. But yeah, uh, this was... I, uh, You know, Shawnee tried to play it out in the first few turns, but then in the second half, it was just like, well, I mean... Yeah. And, and this is not taking anything away from Rick, but yeah, like... Dice happened, not yeah. to Rick, but to Shawnee. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's not a slight on Rick, as he obviously did the right things and everything. But yeah, he just he just absolutely yeah, tore through Sean's team in it. It was the second half. He had about four players left or something, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> it was just a, no, it was, it was horrific. And the final match was an elf off between Fatin and Crucifer. Mm-hmm. I I watched this one uh, recently, and uh, it it was a classic. Uh, pro elves versus pro elves. You stall out until, until turn eight, then you score. The other team tries to do a one turner. They fail or they don't fail, and then you do the same thing in the second half. Uh, except the spice in the second half here is that turn sixteen turned into turn fifth, uh, turn fifteen with a riot. So uh, Crucifer was in a real good shout to getting a two one. Um, by moving the ball up and putting it in a semi 
a decent cage, but uh, Fatin came back with a proper defense uh, and blitzed uh, Crucifer's ball carrier down and basically got rid of it. So it ended up with a tie. Nice. Which is, you know, having played against both of these uh, coaches in this league, I think what what happened was the same thing that happened to me after like the first drive. You're like, okay, nothing weird has happened. I'm playing against pro elves. I cannot score quickly because they're going to score on me. So this is a tie now. And then you play for the tie. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the thing, isn't it? They're, they're, and the funny thing is, getting the riot, they are about the best two-turn team out there, aren't they? Pro yeah. Elves, like, there's, there's no counterplay against, like, you know, the Nurse of Steel, isn't it? You could, doesn't matter if you're basing with four guys, he's, he can still just nab it and run away. So, yeah, impressive by fighting, I guess, to, to escape with a 1-1, eh? And here's the table. Uh, so, yeah, first of all, congratulations on yourself being undefeated, but uh, also, what the hell, Ricks? <laughs> What? Yeah, I feel I feel like I'd be I'd be even more like heck yeah I'm um, I'm undefeated, but then there's an ogre team ahead of me. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck? Uh, no, but I mean, um, I feel like we we have two games left. Uh, there's definitely uh, a chance for people, uh, especially you know, Crucifer, who's uh, who's at four games. If he gets if he gets uh, two more wins. Uh, there's nothing really stopping him from getting getting into the into the playoffs, I think. Yeah. Um, but of course, I mean, we'll we'll see we'll see what happens at the top. Yeah. Because I'm playing I'm I'm pl I'm playing Rick uh, next week. Um, so someone's going to have a lot of points, and someone else is going to be real sad that they don't have as many points. Indeed. Or we're just going to draw, which. I don't think it's going to happen, but we'll see. And yeah, he, these are the fixtures. So, uh, wow, what a what a headliner that is, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, for me personally, the th I think part of the thing that's worked so well for me is that I have a rat ogre with block, which <laughs> is generally has been hard to deal with for for most of the other teams, or it's tied up like two or three pieces and left my rats a bit more free to move around. That's not going to be the case uh, against Rick. Also, my Rat Ogre has Frenzy, which means it's even harder for me to use the Rat Ogre effectively. Um, but with that said, I do have a Storm Vermin with Tackle, so, you know, maybe I can get rid of snot some Snotlings, we'll see. My, my current plan is to uh, uh, hope that Rick doesn't pick the ball up. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Because if he doesn't pick the ball up, uh, my gutter runners pick the ball up. Yeah, yeah, that is that is tends to be how the game goes against Orcas, doesn't it? <laughs> that you struggle, you're gonna really struggle to like like every every team in Blood Bowl struggles to take the ball off a strength five block player, don't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. But and then I think like once again, Cru Crucifer versus Eliod. I mean, I'm not going to say classic matchup, but uh, Orcs versus Pro Elf. I mean, Elliot's going to try and uh, control that and not uh, let Crucifer get close to the ball. But I think the same thing there. Like, if 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 the if the Black Orcs behave, that's kind of spooky for for Crucifer. Uh, if if they don't, uh, I think uh, uh, I think Pro Elves are happy. But once again. I'm I'm very much pro pro elves generally, so I'm like yes, of course pro elves can take any team. <laughs> um, but I feel like both Crucifer and uh, Crucifer versus Aliod and Fatten versus Shoni, I feel like both of those games can go either way. Um, but I do think I don't think they're gonna tie though. Yeah. I think one of them's gonna win, but I don't I don't know who. It's interesting, isn't it? It's so it's it's funny because especially when people are when people are bad with pro elves, I always think it's a great matchup, you know, because mm -hmm. you ju because they don't have like the kind of look a dog route, if you like, of wood elves where they're up, they're so yeah. fast and they've got the leaps. They, they've got you've got to play them well, and and they're so fragile with armor seven. Like it's 
I just like I'm, I'm always rubbing my hands together when I when I get them in the ladder. But yeah, not if it's Christopher or Fatten because they are really good and they are going to make it really hard for Elliot and Shawnee. And it they should be great games to watch. I think. Yes. Welcome to the fun division, <laughs> where the fun games happen. <laughs> as, been pointed, as been pointed out previously, I do enjoy watching dwarf games. But at the same time, have you heard about Pro Elves and Orcs? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, look, we, we deserve it. Like, the good thing is, at least the people who deserve to be together are together in Group B, aren't <laughs> Yes, yes, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well there you go. Thank you, thank you so much uh, for joining us, Kanora. You are absolute blood bowl royalty, and thanks for taking part in the division as well. Uh, I really didn't expect you to, and, and and I'm so happy you did. So yeah, thanks, thanks on both fronts. Brilliant stuff. Thanks for having me, and uh, thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.